All right. Uh, my name is Waylon Lewis, and I'm going to talk very slowly because no one is tuned in right now, and we are waiting <laughs> for you to be here. And I am honored to be here with Nikki Myers. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to be with you. I have to make a comment about your cool pants, which are like army Ooh. material, but like the, what do you call them? The Drop crotch. Drop crotch. <laughs> That's sexy. Who came out with that term? Drop crotch. There goes that fashion trend. There you go. Yeah. Um, so where do you where do you buy army drop crotch pants? Oh my goodness. Can I show them? Is that really weird? Oh yeah, you should. That's, that's weird. Here we go. Oh, they're overall they're over drop crotch wait, 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 army wait, wait, material. Wait, wait. Come on, let's do this. This is a perfect lead up for people to tune in. Yeah. How about that? Oh my god. I know. So cool. And Thank pockets. you. And pockets. Ugh. And I, I got yoga clothes underneath, so I'm always yoga ready. What are you doing tonight? I'm teaching. I'm Where are you teaching? teaching? At a yoga school here in Boulder. So do you ever teach like normal yoga? Because you have a specialty here. Yeah, I have a specialty. What is your special? So tell us, this is a very serious subject, but we're allowed to have fun. Okay. What is, uh, well, because you're clearly not going to not have fun. I'm clearly not yeah. going to not So happen. what do you, what is Y12SR? Very good. Your I'm organization. Really impressed. Thank you. You, you did. Not quite as you dumb it. as you I've seen. <laughs> so Y12SR is the yoga of 12-step recovery. Okay. And so it's this combination of yoga and the 12-step program in order to be a piece of what I love to call a sustainable platform for addiction recovery. So if anyone has questions for Nikki at any time, please ask him. If you're just tuning in, say where you're from. And if you're supportive of talking about addiction and working with it mindfully and uh, actually working with it powerfully, give it a like or a love or a funny face emoticon. That helps it get out. And then we also, in the comments, are putting info. Oh, it looks like we already did uh, about a month long about a big thing that's coming up. So check out the comments. <laughs> um, so how did – so I want to get to the whole, we're going to talk about the opioid crisis, about addiction generally. You wrote a great article on Elephant that I just read uh, uh, for the first time. I'm Even though it was say. written in 2014. Well, I might have read it in 2014, <laughs> but, often, but I don't think so. So it was about the samskaras. Can you tell me yeah. what is, it's a very um, confusing word, but it's a very exciting subject. Yeah, it is. It really is. And in terms you of close this. Close the door. In terms of this conversation about addiction, one of the things I love to do is broaden the perspective of addiction. Normally when you say addiction, we first mind usually goes to substance or you know alcohol or right. drugs or something like that. And uh, part of Watovasar, part of what we want to do is broaden that whole definition. Right. So it's far beyond substance. It's far beyond, you know, they're also what we call process or behavioral addictions. And, um, you know, there are numbers around we were, what we were speaking to, because it's the current pandemic, the opioid crisis. But when you couple that with numbers from other addictions as well, mm -hmm. and, and the destruction and the tearing up of families and the death with that, the numbers are insane relative to all that. So back to your question about yeah. some scars. Right? Yeah. So well, some scars is something we all work with. Absolutely. All of us. Absolutely. Everyone watching this. As a matter of fact, in a way, addiction is something we all work with right. because of the I love this. <laughs> I love this because often we. So I grew up in the Buddhist tradition. Yeah. We talk about some scars as well. Yep. Um, and attachment. And attachment, yeah. which is one of the three root poisons in Buddhism. Yeah. Um, the other two are being a jerk and <laughs> being a putz. Uh, but uh, no, um, so in Buddhism, we talk a lot about depression or habitual patterns or all these things. And when we talk about it with the elephant community, often people are like, no, you're not going through depression. Depression is a clinical thing and you can't talk about it. And while that's true, and I totally understand there's chemical yeah. issues in this, Everyone can go through addiction. Everyone can go through depression, and it may not look like the opi opioid crisis or whatever. Right. We all can learn from what you're about to tell yeah. me, and I'm going to show. Yeah, no, that's all right. But here's the big statement, and, you know, at some point when I'm doing trainings and teaching and all that, I usually make 
this statement and you know it, it kind of throws things right yeah. that we're all addicted to the way we process our reality right wow <laughs> that should be the new title for this video i love this <laughs> and that we really are and i and love this because if you admit it just like probably an alcoholism that's, oh my give come on give it to me i was intimidated by your high five <laughs> <sighs> high five with making Give, Give it me another to chance. Me. Give it to another me. Another chance. That was worse. <laughs> that was better. That was a little better. Can't do it. Give it to me, though. That was yes. that was tomorrow. That's you. it. All right. That's it. So, so I'm addicted to my way of and my speediness and my view. neuroses yes. and my prejudices. So, what do I do now? <laughs> now, there's a good <laughs> oh, question. Well, the first thing is yeah. what you just said. Once I admit it, that's why I love. The 12 step program in conjunction with this step one with of the 12 step program is admitting right okay that and the idea is once i admit it then there's a possibility to see beyond it right, right. it's like i what i talk about all the time we kind of we this is kind of the matrix we're gonna look <laughs> you know You're and that's, show me a spoon and then <laughs> Yeah. You know, the binary. We live in good, bad, right, wrong, and very superior. This is what I was writing about. Right, yeah. yeah back, yeah. Good memory. Yeah. It's, yeah. Do you just write that same article everywhere? Is that why you remember it? No, no. That was a good one, though. I thought we were the only one. It you was were. So you were reading. the only one. You repeated word for word what you wrote three words three years ago. You, you, but I can't help it. That was and, good stuff. I right. almost said the word. I almost said oh. shit, right? Oh. <laughs> you almost said shit. Good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's a lot of comments. Anyone who comments, we will get to them as long as they're interesting. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, right, okay. um, kind of the good, bad, right, wrong. And once I admit that, right. once I admit that I live in the matrix, because I do, right, then there's a possibility to see beyond it. There's a possibility to sit, but you can't do it. So if, you're saying we split up the whole world into binary things, good, bad, yummy, gross, whatever, attractive, boring, whatever. And that's, is that a pro, <laughs> I was about to say, is that bad? Is that, <laughs> is that problematic in some way? Um, it's, it's problematic when we don't get that there's something beyond it, right? There's, right. A, there's a, you know, it was, I'm, I'm gonna do, I think it's, it's, I wish I could say it was my quote, but I think it's a Jesus thing, okay. right? Well, this <laughs> so, is on the internet, so literally you can just steal quotes <laughs> all you want. Said, you know, we're in it, and we got to know we're in it, but we don't have to be of it, right? So okay. I don't have to live up. And so, but so, I am in it. So, so I gotta, one of my favorite quotes by Abraham Lincoln or, or uh, Gandhi or Einstein. Is what? You said, they all said that. Oh, they all did. On the internet, right. everyone said this, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. But that's the idea. I yeah. got to admit that I'm I'm in it. Right. And then there's a possibility. Right. To, because that's you know, awareness. That's the first step in meditation. That's the first, it is the first step yeah. in the 12-step program. Oh, I love that. Right. So in meditation, you just sit down and you become aware of your thoughts. And before you do anything about anything, you just have to be aware. And then you're like, oh, my God, there's that's thousands right. of thoughts in my mind. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Running my life. And I don't have to attach to any one of right. them. Right. Yeah, yeah. So and so this is so interesting. So meditation and yoga can actually help with addiction. Yes. Because addiction is pretty intense, like it drug is addiction. Pretty super intense. intense. Right. It's pretty or intense. Alcohol. Yeah. Now the way that we work with it with and watch what it's are, it's based in um like there's a, a yoga sutra from the yoga sutras of Patanjali, right? And there there's one, it's yoga sutra two sixteen. And that um, yoga sutra says, Heya Dukkha Anagata. And what that means is future suffering can be avoided. Heya Dukkha Anagata. Anagatam. Anagatam. Yes. Future suffering can be avoided. Future suffering can be avoided. Yeah. Right? And so the idea of this is I want to avoid the, the suffering that I know relapse. Right? We call this right. a relapse prevention. You go program. around and around and around. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's not for detox. It's not for any of that level of intensity. Right. This is for relapse prevention. Someone who has decided that they want something different, right? These are tools to support them so that, you know, I don't fall back into the samsaric trap, the pattern. But don't most addicts, I, I'm just speaking on my personal experience, not as a drug or alcohol addict, but in terms of my addictive behavior, I 
I definitely want to change my habitual patterns, but then I just go around and around and around somehow. And so how do you get out of that? Right. And okay. so those are the tools that we support people. That's powerful work. In adopting in their lives, right? First is, first, like you said before, awareness, right? And that I can begin to notice pretty quickly, which is why we always bring it back to the body, because our body's going to tell us first. Oh, right. Your video started with an ideal Paul Kavala quote. About, yes. Um, yoga isn't about the body. It's about our, I forget the quote. I forgot it too. Anyway, it's, yeah. it's about our entire life, not just our physical fitness. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And so the model we use is from, in, in Watch Over Sire, is one from the Upanishads. So we use all the sacred texts. And that's the five body model. And okay. so we look to develop a framework for sustainable addiction recovery that's based on that five body model. What's the five body thing? Gotcha. What a great question. Incisive oh questions God, from Leila. Incisive questions. What's the five that? body thing? All right. So um, this comes from the Upanishads. And it says that we're not one body, but they're five. And okay. the five bodies are first the structure, the physical body. Okay. The second one is energy or emotion okay. right that that body um you know i tell people when they go to a doctor and they take their their heart rate their blood mm. pressure all those kinds of things the vitals right they're measuring energy in that's the like the second body that's the second one okay right so physical body physical body energy body energy will, or right. health yep. vitality yep. Yep. yeah vitality is a perfect way to say it well you said that i, I did <laughs> yeah. i love you know I love how you say it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, the third body is the thinking body. Mono. Like okay. It's called mono my culture. And that's the intellect or the, the intelligent okay. mind, okay. if you will. Third body. Right. That's third. Fourth is what the yogis speak of as character or personality or hmm. or so if you think of mono maya, which is the intellect. Its function is to coordinate things that come from the outside in, because it monitor, monitors everything that comes in via your five right, senses. Your handling stuff. That's right. Isn't that more your personality? Nope. Your personality. I feel okay. like my personality handles stuff, and my character is like driving but the. The mind, though, the function of the mind is to coordinate what comes in via the five senses. Okay. So to coordinate, yeah, to okay. coordinate, you know, where I am in space. And, you know, anything that comes in, because the only way in here is via the five. We're getting like a free session with Nikki Myers. I, I like love this. this. I'm learning so much. Yeah. Yeah. And Typically, so our interviews, like, I got the last interview I did. So bad. Oh. Because <laughs> we have a guest star right here. Rob Schwer was just on the other day. Wonderful man. All right. Little His intro. interview was not bad. Tell the no, truth. No, he was wonderful. See? He is wonderful. See? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're at fourth body. Okay. Right. So mine outside in, fourth body is inside out. So according to the ancients, this is where your personality, your values, psycho-emotional states, all of that kind of stuff sit that way. We have a pot shop two doors down. I feel like we should make a run. <laughs> this is getting pretty deep. <laughs> Don't okay. you love it? That's no, probably not funny humor for a yoga. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is humor allowed? Are you allowed humor to have your reverent humor? humor? Okay. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Five, fifth body, heart. Yeah. Okay. But not the blood pump. This right. is the, the caring, the empathy? spiritual heart. Right. Okay. Right. See the love and devotion. And okay. Joy love. And right. All that good okay. stuff. Okay. Right. And so the ancients say that when we're whole and balanced, that there's alignment or integration mm -hmm. between and among those five bodies. Mm -hmm. But when there's not, when there's misalignment, that the system opens itself up and then in that state, disease, dysfunction, disharmony, all the disses right. can get into the system. And that makes practical sense. When we're stressed out, system. we're caught up in our mind, we're not exercising or eating, you know, we're standing it's up easier eating faster, to get a cold, then you get sick. It's easier to get stressed exactly. out. Yeah. You right. look old before your time, that kind of thing. Like stress makes us old in That's a funny right. way, unless we deal with stress. That's right. right. That's right. And so we assert that any true platform for sustainable addiction recovery 
needs to cover all five of those bodies. You need to have tools and resources right. to realign and right. rework with all five of those bodies. But then you take like the 12 steps and yeah. somehow those yeah. two yeah. systems work together. Yeah. The 12 steps are very cognitive. Right uh -huh. now, I don't suggest that they're the only thing that can serve in that cognitive they're role. They're pretty popular. It seems like they kind of work for. And they're free. That's yeah. why I love to work with them. It's not big money. It, you know, right. it's something that you know people go into a church basement put a dollar in a basket, right? right. And so, uh, if you got a dollar, right? Right. they always tell you you're more important than your money. Right. And so um, one of the big reasons that I did this work to couple these was for that reason. I wanted to get at a population that may not have access to big money. Can I ask, uh, and you can not answer, but how did you get involved in this? Why? Well. Why and how? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's out of my own lived experience. Okay. So um, this is quite, you ready to go here? Let's I, I don't know. <laughs> All right, all right. But I asked. All so right, you asked. I got what's coming to me. You asked. You got what's okay. coming. All right. So, um, you know, for me, it was, uh, there's a, a phrase we use in the, in the program, jails, institutions, and death, right? Jails, institutions, and death. You're right. And okay. so my first 34 years in, in life, I was in the throes pretty good. I started, you know, in, in the throes of addiction when I was 13. Right? Wow. Yeah. At 13. Yeah. Well, that was the beginning. And then it went downhill a, a lot of the ways from, from that point on. Okay. And we're just going to suffice it to say that in the throes of addiction. Um, so personal experience. Personal. Okay. Lived experience. Right. 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 So in the throes of uh, addiction, for me, there was domestic violence. Right. There was commercial sex work. Wow. There was, um, uh, you know, pretty much that phrase, jails, institutions, and death. And the right. death, by the time I, I feel walked, like that's a badass tattoo or necklace or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so it right. was all of that that brought me. Do you know the story of King Ashoka, the Indian king? Not. A it kind of reminds me of his story because he was like the great king of in Indian history in real life, and he was this murderous conquering king and he conquered you know army after army and one day he was walking through a battlefield after a battle and there were just corpses everywhere and dead horses and just the smell of blood and death and he just had this moment of like you know it was lived experience yeah. for him and he was like what is going what am i doing yeah. and there happened to be a monk walking by like doing the last rites or whatever not i'm doing the catholic but you know like a buddhist monk <laughs> And he said, you know, how do, is there a path out of aggression and craving and ignorance? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for. Uh, well, you yeah. ain't, we ain't done yeah. yet. Hey, watch out. No rush. No rush. <laughs> so I found recovery, right? The 12 step program. I always love to say how the 12 step program saved my life. And I'm so how so did you grateful. hear about or find the 12 step program? How uh, I, I was by this time 34. And I found a, a friend of mine who I had been in the, the streets with right. had found the 12-step So program. two decades of, of lived experience before you connected with the 12-step program. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I found my way in the 12-step program, and lots of great things started happening in my life. I you know, got my kids back. I got, uh, wow. I got, uh, I went back to school. Wow. I got an MBA. I got first. I got an undergrad degree. This sounds really naive. I am super naive, so I might be offensive here, but uh, I want to ask you if That's I may. Okay. Like, were you just so happy at after you're doing the twelve steps? Suddenly, you get your kids back and your life back and your entering yeah, education. It's, it's interesting. Like you have a whole new life. Yeah, it is really interesting. Or was it just so hard? Everything or both? Um. I, the interesting piece of that question is through all the doing and accomplishment and all that, I could never touch joy. Mm. And I, there's a, a neurological reason for that. You know, okay. when you're in the throes of addiction, your dopamine receptors shut down. And dopamine is the, the uh, neurotransmitter that gives us a sense of satiation and joy and wow. pleasure. And they shut down. 
right? And Do they so, die or just they kind of turn off? Oh, uh, well, my teacher says the answer to everything is it depends. <laughs> so, it, yeah, so yeah. it depends. You know, there's so many, there's so much craziness now in the world of drugs and substances that there's a lot of things we don't even know the long-term effects about, but some things we do. And but you have a lot of joy that. right now. I seems like do. Yeah. I do. So it I somehow do. came back. Yeah, and I think you know it gets to your uh, what you asked earlier about yoga and meditation. I think meditation is a, and, and yoga have a big, big, big deal to do with that. Mm. Yeah, but can I finish the story? Please, Come on, please. quick. We're about to get quick, right? Because it's interesting, it gets to the same scar thing, right? So, eight years clean, lots of good things start happening. I graduated, got my MBA, I was doing great work, all this good stuff. And, nice. and uh, I was working for a, a company, a software company, and they sent me on a, a, a business trip and to a, a place in Germany. And very long story short, I relapsed in Germany. So I'm clean for eight years. Wow. And a relapse on it started with alcohol, mm. and by the time that trip was over, I found my way to Amsterdam. And the big deal was even after eight years without a drink or a drug in my body, once I got to Amsterdam, I knew exactly what to do, exactly where to go, exactly right. how to talk. I morphed right, right back into the pattern. Well, because you got skill, you Scar. develop skills even right. in, in that. Yeah, samskara. In, uh, in that samskara state, yeah. right? And so then I'm back in the throes again. I finally make it back to the States. That was when I found, I reunited with yoga, right? And right. so first it was a Bikram practice and an Ashtanga practice, and it really deepened that. Wow. And then I'm into this about four years, and I decide that I don't need a 12-step program anymore, that yoga is going to do it for me. I don't right. need anything else. Right. And just this is all I So need. first all 12 steps, then all yoga. And then after that one, I relapsed again. Wow. And it was after the second relapse that I discovered that these like, things need, need to be married. Yeah. Like they oh. need to support. They do support each other. And I need to use them in a way that they do support each other. So it was out of that that all the work. Wow. Well, what a path. No shit. Joining all that. Yes, yeah. I think at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so joining those two together, that is like historic work. That's like the coming. So Trungpa Rinpoche, do you know Chugyam Trungpa? He wrote a bunch of Buddhist stuff. Absolutely. Uh, he's my parents' teacher. He wrote The Coming Together of East and West is where the sparks will fly. And that's like the 12 step and yoga coming together. That's like joining two continents. Together. I love that. I love that. Quote. You did all that. Yeah. I love that quote. That's a great quote. And have you seen those two complement and really help other I folks do. Uh, yeah. In a way that yeah. individually they couldn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. In many, many, many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, in this whole thing of relapse prevention, you know, just giving people right. with the, some of the yogic tools, to use one of the things we look to do in one twelve is take you know these little program phrases, if you will, and turn them into what we call embodiments, right? So there's something that I can feel right in my body, right? right? Um, and that comes back to the five bodies. That it's not just an intellectual that thing. It's not You're just yeah, You're you, practicing you can intellect your way into a coffin, right? right? And I know a lot of people that right. have done unfortunately that that's been the path right so it's got it from my perspective and what I've seen and working with now I don't know, even thousands of folks right with this that it has to be more than than just an intellectual undertaking wow Woo. Woo. so can I ask you another question of course um, I feel like I'm in a classroom uh, so Trauma. You talk about trauma. I mean, you certainly went through like a couple decades of this stuff. How do you work with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I look at you now, you seem all happy. Like if I didn't know any of your story, I'd be like, wow, you know, you got your, you're a fun, cool lady doing cool <laughs> stuff, which you are. But with that past, is that like, does that feel like an anchor that weighs you down or baggage? Not or at how all. Do you work with yeah. It? Let me tell you how. Yeah. And, uh, because it feels neutral. Uh -huh. It feels totally neutral that I know that this is a part of the path, right? 
it, it's part a part of my path, right? And it's neutral. And so is on the flip side of that, MBA, you know, um, founder of Entrepreneur's Heart. That's neutral too. It's all uh, neutral. Right. So, so it's not good and not bad. Good, or, it's yeah. not good or bad or right or wrong. I love to say that all of that stuff informs my walk in the world. None of it defines me. None of it defines me. Right. And so, um, so I, and for me, I knew when I was done with it because it was neutral. I can talk about my time in commercial sex work and, and that whole thing. Like I talk about my Volkswagen Beetle, which I am kind of attached to a Beetle. Right. I, look, I look damn cute in that car. I think you look damn cute without your car. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in, in Buddhism, Trunk Room Shade would talk about it like the manure of experience, that all of experience, good or bad, That's or both it. or whatever, is fertilizer. If we relate to it mindfully, it's fertilizer for... That's it. Like you turn your... Literally, you're like embodiment of this. You turn your neuroses or habitual patterns or some scars or whatever into from poison. There's Peacock is a symbol of it for some reason. I think peacocks have some ability to transmute poison into the colors in their feathers. Wow. Um, so that's like the classical symbol of it. I love it. I don't know what kind of poison we're talking about, but. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'll have to look. That so it up. becomes the adornment and the embellishment and your offering to the yep. world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if folks want to uh, connect with you or with, uh, um, oh my God. Come Why on. Why 12SR. Very good. Thank I you. love it. That was a good one. I'm getting nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous. Um, so uh, how, do, how can they do that? Um, easiest way is web. www.wiseflobasar.com. And I'm Nikki at wiseflobasar.com. So. Okay, Nikki with an I. We'll put that all in the comments and in the captions, all that. Um, so do you do these courses all around the world? Yeah. Or do people go like, study with you at some Y twelve SR college. That's what it feels like it should be. Like a pilgrimage. I love it. I love it. No, I do workshops all around the world. All around the world. And but how is that enough because a workshop I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. Saying? That's all right. Um they're listed on the website. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. On the and the tour t shirts you can get the black like yeah. hmm. you know uh rock rock star tour t shirts yeah. like your dates where you're going. Well we do have something like that. That'd and the fun. caption on the back says for real for real. For real for real? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um but one workshop can't be enough. No. I mean, how do no. folks so travel this path? What we do is we train addiction professionals and yoga teachers mm. to offer what are called Y12SR meetings in their home communities, right? And so a Y12SR meeting looks like, it looks like a, a discussion group based in the 12 steps. And then directly after it is this trauma-informed themed yoga practice based in whatever the discussion was, right? So we create this trauma-informed themed practice. Basically. So it looks kind of like a 12-step meeting in a way, but it's not, right? It kind of looks like that. And then directly after that is this trauma-informed, directly before or after. It doesn't matter. It just matters that the two are combined. combined. It doesn't matter which one. So you first. do some yoga and you do some talking that's right or you do some, some talking some discussion and then you do some yoga and and um it, it's a very specific let uh, say trauma informed theme practice the theme of watch over is the issues live in your tissues mm -hmm. and the idea right. the idea right. is that, that these classes support releasing the issues that live in the tissues so there's some right. really special things in that to support releasing the issues in the tissues. So if you're a parent or a family member or you have a loved one who's going through addiction and you send them a link to Y12SR and their reaction is like, oh, yoga is really going to help me with addiction, yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, how would you respond to that? I asked them to come to a Y12SR meeting because Y12SR is not based in one addiction. All addictions are in the room at the same time. So including if I'm addicted to another person, right? Or could, right. so, you know, there are programs for that, Al-Anon and CODA and all of those kinds of things relative to that. 
But in oh, this, I know what you just said. <laughs> what was that? Al Anon and Al Anon. Coda is Codependence Anonymous, which uh, could be a whole okay. nother conversation all in and of itself. Sure. Right. Well, come come on back. <laughs> I'd love to. I'd yeah. love to. Um, so you get everything in the room at the okay. same time. You got so every, every, every form. For every Everyone's form. welcome. And everyone's welcome. And so you get that to hear make it this from intense too, because you don't. You're not just focusing on one. You're uh, focusing half on or, a because right. my experience with this is, if you don't get at the root, right? And the root, you, you know, we could talk about that from a yoga perspective too. You, pretty, sure. I know you'd love that. Right? Sure. But if you don't get at the root, then you end up doing what I did, right. which is play whack-a-mole. We'll call it whack-a-mole. Yeah. So, you know, I swatted down drugs and alcohol, and then money popped up. Right. You know, right. and earned. It's like you need to put that issue is in your tissues somewhere. Somewhere. And right. then you whack that one down, and food pops up. And then you whack that one down, and another one pops up until you get it root. Right? And so this supports, mm. this supports the whole idea of getting underneath. And what what the root um, addiction is? So uh, maybe we should take some uh, questions. I'd love to from the from the people. Uh, alrighty. So if you have any questions, uh, go for it. Uh, looks like you have a friend or a colleague commenting. Mish. Oh. Do you know Mish <laughs> that's, Caldwell? That's my daughter. That's your daughter. That's my daughter. Oh, I'm giving her a like. <laughs> I wish I could give you more, but all right. So she just left the email address. If you y'all want to, oh, she's on you know, it. Yeah, you know, she's on it. <laughs> Lindsay's on it. All right. Evelyn uh, has a question. Her she has a very short question. Her question is normal yoga. So what kind oh, of yeah, yoga great, are great, you doing? Great, great question. Yeah. Again, it's this trauma informed thing. Yoga practice, um, and there's many things that go into that trauma informed thing. My training comes from from yo know, i'm a yoga therapist and so it comes it's infused with a lot of things from yoga therapy the basis of my training though is vinny yoga and and my big my two biggest teachers in the world are gary crashaw and sean corn like mm -hmm. my, yeah so those are my two biggest influences mm. Yeah. I feel like sh I remember you around Sean or Sean talking you about do. you or something. I bet Sean you. and I have been close for a long time. Yeah, and who was the other one? Uh, Gary Crafton. Oh, yeah, Gary. Yeah, yeah. I only know him from yoga journal conferences, but great. Yeah, those great are guy. my two biggest influences. How cool. I do remember you. We're at yoga journal conferences up at Estes or somewhere. Somewhere yeah. else, maybe? Yeah, many okay. times at Estes. Yeah. yeah, okay, I remember you. Um, all right. So lots of compliments, people saying where they are, blah, blah, blah. Uh, great topic. Uh, okay, any questions? Uh, question from Valinda Yoga. Uh, yes, are are we addicted to our own um, beliefs and reactions? Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Addicted yeah. to our own worldview. Or, you know, right, I'm addicted to being liberal. I'm addicted to being Trump conservative. I'm addicted to being right. I'm addicted to whatever. Yeah, I don't know. not recognizing that, you know, my big thing I tell myself all the time is I don't know what I don't know, right? You know, that's another <laughs> so, T-shirt. Need that on a T-shirt, <laughs> right? And so what what keeps me in this game is recognizing that I don't know what I don't know, but there's always going to be some other little piece in there that that this is a limited database, yeah, that even throws out things that are irrelevant to it. And, and an example about my daughter. She called me up one time and said, uh, will you stop by the CVS, the drugstore that's on the corner of this, this, and that? And I argued with her up and down. There's no CVS because uh, yeah. it threw it out, right? Yeah. And it's not like there wasn't one there, but it wasn't relevant to me. Hmm. And because it wasn't relevant to me, I discarded that it was. And we do this you all just, the time. You mean time. you like, didn't know that it was there because right. so you didn't care about it? So that's never right. It wasn't relevant it. to me. And we do yeah. this all the time. Right. This yeah. is always going on. Right. Yeah. And so and so that's the piece of it in recognition. That that's the piece that's always going on. Yeah. In Buddhism, they talk about like, I don't remember it uh, quite. So my mom will yell at me. But it's like three classes of people from our neuroses. One class is people we're attracted to or not necessarily sexually, but right. we, in some way we want to be around them or we want what they have. A mentor, someone you're attracted to, whatever. So it's that's clinging yeah and then there's people you you can't stand 
aggression you want them to get away or they irritate you or whatever and then but the class that we always forget about is sort of like what i think of as like the wallflower class like the class you don't care people who are kind of irrelevant to you yeah. and you just ignore them yeah. and you literally don't see them and there's so many of those people in our daily lives who we almost consciously are unconscious about That's we're right. like you know some people are like that with the homeless like right. i don't see you I, or the elderly, I don't, you know, whatever it is. That's right. That's right. And it, that's equally important to pay attention to because the Absolutely. first two are easy. They're passion that's and right. passion. That's yeah. right. Anyway. Um, all right. Can I get a witness? There's some, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, all right. Question from Kim. This is probably going back to something we were talking about, but what happens when you're in it and aware of it? You were talking about being in it, not or of being it. of it, not just in it. Right. So her question is, what happens when you're in it and aware of it? I guess maybe in that transition where you're in it, but you're beginning to be aware of it. Yeah, and I'm thinking she's speaking relative to the addiction. Yeah, when you're still in it, but you are aware that you're addicted, but you can't maybe get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is my thing uh, about asking myself the question all the time what's most important to me right and then looking at our what the yogis say we got three things that we can work with right we got our thoughts our speech and our actions yeah. those are the three things that we can we can't control them so don't be in the illusion of control but the three things we got right. to control work with, never works it will right. never work it's an illusion right right you know try and control your thoughts right. it ain't gonna happen right gonna so happen. <laughs> so those are three things you got to work with so my thing is really getting a, a sense of what is important to me and then asking myself continually the question is this thought speech action it's serving what i say is most important to me so, so instead so of getting, being stuck in the moment feeling that addiction that want you intellectually say what is important to me that's and one it, is way it serving it right and ask is this next action that i'm contemplating right. serving what i say is most important where i want to get or that's be, right or who i want to be right? that's right that's yeah. right and then using a set of tools right we get a hopefully a set of tools and if you're in it in that deep in the addiction you know there there is it, it, Sometimes you need a rotor rooter is what I <laughs> you know, sometimes you really do. So if it's a detox issue. Is that the thing that like drills up in your pipes or yeah, something? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. If it's a detox issue, you need to go to a detox in order to support. You need a break. You need, yes. Yeah. You can't you need, just that's right. be in it all the time. That's right. right. That's right. You need something that's going to support that process. But then you can still relapse when you come back from that sort of detox break place so at some point you have to be able to like ground it in your everyday life that's right that that's right and that's what hard. that's where we i i love to think why 12 us fits in more once you've been through the initial right. process the original thought with why 12 us it's turned into something completely different, which is an interesting conversation. Huh. But it, what, the original thought was to support people who came out of treatment. How do you make that transition into your daily life? What mm. can you use for tools now that you're, you know, you're in your daily life? That this was a piece of a platform to right. serve that. Right. But like I said, it's turned into something completely different over right. the course. It's been around now for a minute. And so, and you can find a meeting in most places in the U.S. or a lot of places in the U.S. There, I don't even know how many there are. But if you look on whitefocusart.com under meetings, okay. it tells you where meetings are. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Do you have a book? Ha! <laughs> That's the sore subject. I've been working on a book. <laughs> I am working on a book. I'm 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 gonna commit and say very very soon. Very uh, soon. so I can give you some tips on that. I like. need because I literally teach a course on this. Oh, you, you need to help me because you sound like me, where you start books, but books become this huge project, and then you're busy and you're doing awesome stuff in your daily life, and you just kind of never get that, quite that's around me. to it. You need to so help I wound up serializing it. 
which is like what Charles Dickens did. It was nothing new that I thought of. It's just uh, you publish one blog at a time, wherever you want. It could be your own private blog even. I did it on Elephant for my book, which is the red one. Um, and you're going to give me a copy of that, aren't you? No, we'll see. Ah, uh, uh, um, and so you, you did what? So I did one chapter at a time, and I got real-time feedback from people, you know, which really helped me connect and keep the reader in mind. And then when I was done with the number of chapters I wanted or the story, then I just put it together in a book. And then suddenly I was done. See, But I couldn't ever I sit do. down and write I a know. whole book on my own. I, I needed, I think some social type people, or at least I was, needed that, like, am I connecting? Am I off? Am I, on? you know, it really helped me to get right. up. So one chapter at a time, break right. it down. All break right. it well, down. Then, then it's sooner, then it's closer than I thought. If that's because I got a bunch of things. Exactly. That's written. what I'm always saying to my friend Peggy Markell, who's a slow food chef. She's like, never published a book. She's huge in the whole foodie slow food world. Never published a book. And it's such a thing in her mind. And I'm like, you've already written like yeah, 35 it's... amazing things. Put them all together. They all work. They all have recipes and a story and blah, blah. It's closer it than I thought it from is. that perspective. And all you need then is a good editor. And a good editor is not necessarily a a great editor, a good editor is a friend who is who cares or a colleague who cares who's super aggressive about organization and so getting you. pointing at you. <laughs> someone, no, I would be the op You need someone who's like type A and organized. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Come on. Yeah, I mean, Lindsay, who works with Elephant, did it for me with uh, my book, and I couldn't wow. have done it without her. But I had many different, it's not that hard to find that person. I had many different people help. And they were all great. Lindsay just kind of took it over and was amazing. I love it. Well, you can't have her. You've helped me tremendously. Actually, you can't have her. I mean, you can't have her. But um, such You've a good cause. You've helped me oh tremendously. Oh my well, God. hopefully that's interesting to anyone who, because yeah. everyone has their story and wants to write something, it seems like. Um, someone said, your strength embodied, I guess, your embodied strength is inspiring. Everyone loves you. Everyone's saying they love you. Um, uh, my greatest trauma was from Allison was a fuel and catalyst for awakening. Thank mm -hmm. you, beautiful, for sharing. Great approach to healing from Nikika. Um, Carrie and Ray, this is Carrie or Ray, saying, What is the reaction? Oh, just a little question. Just a little question, right? right, right. Um, you'll recognize this term from Buddhism, a vidya, right? Ignorance. <laughs> Right, but not in so much ignorance, stupid. It's it's almost the ignorance, like we were talking about. Don't know when I don't know that I don't Avidya know. Vidya is absence it's, of Vidya. I went like, to Vidya Elementary School. Vidya was like, if I remember, it's some sort of knowledge, knowledge or insight right. or something. Vidya means knowledge. Okay. You put the A in front of it, it means not. Right. So not knowledge. Right. Right. So misperception. It's uh, it, the right. way that it's described in yoga: false understanding. Or perception but why does it feel that addiction feels so embodied if it's if it's hang on okay yeah yeah we misperceive but he asked for the root yeah right and the root is we misperceive who it is we are that we get in my big example of this is me how often i was in relationship with an image rather than being in relationship with i was in relationship with myself as an image of, a, for let's say, a teacher mm. or a mother or uh, this or that. And my relationship with myself was based in being in relationship with that image right. the, or yeah. that idea. Yeah. Right? So Am I living up to my idea right. of myself? And that's not who we are. Right. Right. And so. It reminds me of people, I want to say Oprah or someone who's like battling with their weight and they want to be this image. But then in some way, that's like almost a violence to who they are. That's right. Okay. Right. And so where that crosses the 12-step program, the 12-step program will say that the root of addiction is stinking thinking. And it's the same thing. Stinking thinking is this misperception and this misperception. Then why does it feel so? Who we are. Sorry. Right. Well, well, because there are all these other things that are going on, on especially when you're speaking to a substance, right? When you, right. That, I'm talking about all addiction and the sure, root sure. of all addiction. Right, right. But when you're talking right. about you're a talking substance, you're talking about the fundamental root. I'm right. talking about right, the right. fundamental root. Got it. 
but the because you got to deal with that right even when the substance goes away right and what happens with if you the want to be real you got to deal that's what i'm talking Damn, that was good. I'm trying right? to get Nikki Myers here. <laughs> Look, it's frozen. It was frozen when I was doing high five. I love it. I hope we got to pick it up because that was good. Right? But, you know, um, when when it's substance related, like particularly in this opioid crisis, your brain gets hijacked. I right. mean, right. hijacked. Exactly. Hijacked. Yeah. Right? And the, the instead of seeking. Like, it's like if you're dying of thirst, you go for drugs. It's like everything gets wired. Hijacked. Yeah. Absolutely hijacked. Yeah. Right? And so, and in, in some ways, not to that extent, not to that extent. It happens with any addiction, right? Your brain, things get hijacked. Right. Right? And so the idea, again, according to both the 12-step program and yoga, is that really is this stinking thing, this misperception that is the root that would cause us to go for and hijack, right? It would, it, it's, it's the root of things, um, uh, according to that. It's, this is, that's a deep question, whoever asked it. We could talk about that for, I don't even, can't even put I a think, time frame on it. Uh, yeah, exactly. And all of this, I'm sure. Um, yeah. So there's a million comments, but everyone just give a like or a love or a funny face emoticon to Nikki. Appreciation oh, for your time. Thank you. Thank You're so you inspiring. I totally remember you with Sean now. It's all coming back. It's all coming and, back um, to me now. Sean loves to hate on my socks, and I'm wearing a particularly awful pair of socks that Sean would hate. I, I can like uh, I can understand. I mean, I, her judgment. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I won't go as strongly as hate, but those, yeah, those are real interesting socks, Waylon. <laughs> In my defense, they were given to me. Uh, I didn't seek them out; they found me. But that may say more about me than the other way around. Nikki, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for asking me. And there is info for her site and for the. Um, the big day coming up. Thank you all. Yeah. yeah. Nikki, thank yeah. you. Please come yeah. back. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Nikki Myers. Nice work. That was.